Hello everybody, this is Joel, also known as Bourbon Dingo, and welcome to my very first Let's Play. For this Let's Play, I've chosen Paradox Interactive's Crusader Kings 2. This episode, I'll focus on briefly introducing the game, what DLCs I'm using, and any modifications to the base game I've made. I'll end by choosing my character and laying some ground rules that I'll be playing with. Real quick, taking a look at my DLCs, I purchased every DLC available for it, but as you can see, I'm not using the Sunset Invasion DLC. Basically, this adds an Aztec invasion, sort of as an alternate history, later in the game, and I'm not really looking forward to using that. Um, I'm not using any uh, actual game modifications, other than a few cosmetic modifications I've made myself in my settings folders. And I can show you how to do that in another video. If that's something you want. If it is, just ask in the comment and I'll start putting it up. Alright, we're going to go ahead and start up the game. Now, Crusader Kings 2 is, as you can see, by Paradox Development Studio. Um, it's a grand strategy game. And... What I mean by a grand strategy game is it's, and I've heard it not so eloquently put as, civilization on steroids. You basically control on a unit level your armies, and you also control the resources of your nation state. And while that is a large portion of this game, um, the part of it that I like and that I like focusing on is more the... Uh, I don't want to say this. Um, it's based on relationships. There's role playing, uh, sort of, involved in it. Your character has traits, your character has stats, and that affects how well you rule and how other people view you in the game. Um, and it's all about relationships. It's all about progressing your dynasty throughout the course of course of the game. And these traits affect those relationships and you can pass genetic traits on to children and it's really really in depth and we'll be looking at that as we go further into the game. What we're looking at right now is the main menu and as you can see there's not a whole lot that's different from what you're used to. You've got your single player multiplayer tutorial. Where we're going to start with however is going to be the options just taking a quick look. Now we have all of our normal options and basically the difficulty I'm going to be playing on is going to be uh, normal. There are five different difficulty settings from very easy to very hard and all it does is really affect uh, bonuses for the AI or yourself depending on which direction you go. Sort of like how civilization does things. I'm also going to keep my autosave interval on yearly even though normally whenever I play I move it up a little bit just in case we get any crashes or anything like that so we don't lose too much progress on this let's play. I'm also disabling all hints because they can get a little annoying. For the audio, I've actually got the music turned completely off. Now the music for this game is absolutely great and I can wholeheartedly recommend it. However, it's a little distracting while playing. Go to apply. And I'll be restarting the game before we really get into it. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move into the game. Moving in through the single player, we can take a look. And what you see before you here is, well, Western Europe. And we can zoom out a little bit and you can take a look. And you can see that we've got everything from Northern Africa all the way up into the Scandinavian area. There's Iceland floating around over there too. However, what you're seeing here is, looks probably like just a whole bunch of words on top of a terrain map. And that's because we're in the terrain map mode right now. What we're going to do is we're going to move over into the independent realm. And this basically makes things a little bit easier to see. As you can tell, we've got Norway and England and France all throughout here. But when you're selecting your character, first off, selecting the date you play before you select the character. As you can see over here, we start at Stamford Bridge in 15th of September 1066. And while these are historical start dates and can basically get you started 
in a historical war, say Stamford Bridge, which was when William the Conqueror from Normandy came in and conquered England, um, to right after he does so, and you can see he's uh, controlling both Normandy and England, and it goes all the way down into the Hundred Years' War. So we can see over here, Golden Horde's come in, taken over quite a bit. The Byzantine Empire is starting to uh, fragment. But what we're going to look at right now is we're going to go back to the beginning, because this is where we're going to start playing at. But between each of these independent realms is all a king or a count or a duke you can play. But the thing is, is that even within the kingdoms, such as, take a look at England right here, even within this kingdom, when I go and select the count view map, I can see certain counts within England. And I can start off as a leech to the king of England. I can move up to the dukes, and I could start as playing a duchy within the kingdom of England. And this can be for any place. You have France down here, also within the Holy Roman Empire. Taking a look at just the kings, you can see this right here. We also have a religion mode which shows uh, the Catholic religion. You can go over here. There's Tengri, Sunni, Shia, all these different religions that you can spread, basically. And then you also have your cultures between Irish, Saxon, there's Norman floating around there, Russian, all the way down to here, where there's, where there's the Levantine and the Bedouin and the Ethiopians. Let's not forget the Iberian Peninsula, which has the Castilians, the Andalusians, the Portuguese. But what we're going to be doing is taking a look at Independent Realm. And we are going to be playing, for this Let's Play, Duke Bledon of Gwynedd. I'm starting with a dukedom because it's a little bit easier than starting with a county, and it'll be a little bit more interesting earlier. Um... But before we start, I wanted to show you something about how you can actually select any of these historical dates or you can select any date you want. If you want to jump up to 1166, you can see how the map has changed on that specific date in 1166. And this goes for something as simple and minute as changing just days forward to changing months forward. And then I change by 100 years, but you can change by 10 you can change by one. It's very um, specific, very, you can control it very finely. Um, but like I said, we're going to be starting at the very start date because I want to try to do something with this Let's Play that I haven't been able to accomplish at all throughout the entire time I've been playing this game. And that's I want to start on the start date and then carry my dynasty. As you can see over here, this is my dynasty, the Matherfall dynasty all the way until the game ends. Now, I'm hoping that that means that I carry this all the way up until about f the mid-1400s when the game actually ends, when there's no more time to be played. However, if should happen that, say, I uh, my dynasty dies out or something like that, that would still be a first for me, is to make it all the way to that point, and that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, a few of the little guidelines that I'm going to be playing by and we're going to move in real fast so I can show you some of these things, is <clears throat> first, the easy one, no restarting in case something bad happens. Um, most people in their Let's Plays have this specific thing. The only time I'm going to restart is if there's a bug um, or a crash, and I'll let you know whenever that occurs. Um, I'm actually going to try to, we actually have a speed set up here, and for any of you that have played The Sims, or maybe even just a lot of these style of grand strategy games, uh, speed passes basically through days based on how fast you have it set. There are five different speeds. One is painfully slow, um, and five is really fast. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to keep my speed on three. The only caveat that I'm going to allow is that I'm going to keep it on two whenever I'm trying to micromanage a war. If we start getting bogged down with some of the empire level play at the end of this let's play, towards the end of this let's play, 
I'll take a vote among my viewership of whether or not they want to have me jump the speed up to four. And last, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to be attempting to roleplay. However, I'm going to give this a caveat as well. I'm going to roleplay based on the traits of my ruler. However, because I want this to actually go until the very end, until mid-1400s, I'm not going to handicap my nation by making rather stupid decisions. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the traits to basically justify what I want to do. Now, sometimes that might be hard, and sometimes I may say something that just seems like it's out of left field for the justification of doing it, but that's how it's going to happen. All right, as you can see, we've chosen Duke Bled and Gwynedd, and he starts off, he's not great, but he starts off with the traits of dutiful cleric, kind, lustful, brave, and ambitious. Uh, as we can see, these affect his attributes, which are all average or below. And this should give us a decent starting area. Uh, for longtime players, you can tell right now that I've made a modification to the color of this uh, duchy. Basically, if we dial back into, and these are your different map modes, and you can find all sorts of different things in them. And I'll be going through them right before I end this uh, in this specific Let's Play. But if we go into the de jure duchies, and I'll explain what de jure is in a later episode, you can tell that they've all been colored <clears throat> differently than the previous map mode I, I, I was in. And this is to show you which, by law, were considered part of a single duchy. And that allows you to become duke of that area. But, I guess right before I'll let you guys go, I'm going to go through what all these different map modes show you. And then we'll move on to the next episode. So, what we're going to do real fast is we're going to look at the top here. Because anything that I have here are just quick buttons that I've added from here. So, let's take a look real fast. You have the terrain mode, which is exactly what it sounds like. You can look at what the terrain is for all the different areas. And you can see... Like, if you zoom in here real fast, you can see this little line in here, and that's to show that there was no crossing. <clears throat> that there's no crossing between those. That to make a land attack, you would have to go around the sides. But you can still view that within other modes as well. So, this one really isn't that useful. The most useful, for me anyway, is the independent realms match which shows you uh, specific realms independent of other lieges. The diplomatic relations map which is whichever one you've selected, so in this case we're considered the default selected, it will show you across the world your um, diplomatic relation with everybody. And from what I understand, yellow is a low diplomatic relation. Like, not super low, but lower than zero, and um, it's lower than zero, and not at war. I'm, I believe it's red if you're at war. Green, of course, shows that they have a good opinion of you. Like, darker green right here shows that he's a vassal, but he has a good opinion of me. Green is just you. Blue, I believe, and we don't have any currently, blue is your allies. Moving on to religion, we can once again see what I would showed you just before, which between the Catholic and the Tengri and Orthodox, and it shows you what's the basic religion at all these places. But, what this mode shows you when you're actually in there is this. And we can see that the actual religion of, say, um, uh, Lishbuna, I believe is what, how that one's pronounced. But even Evora right there would be a little bit easier for me to pronounce. But the base religion there is Catholic. But you can see this green shading to show that currently the people in control of it are part of the Sunni religion. And for the length of time that those stay covered... 
there's a possibility that they will completely change over to the Sunni religion. Which means that in that case you would turn around and probably have a base of green like this, but with these colors over it. Moving on to culture, it shows basically the exact same thing. You can see uh, Irish, but right here Dublin starts off Norwegian, currently controlled by an Irish ruler, so it is currently being slowly, very slowly, converted into Irish. The economy, basically as you can see right around here, you have bad economies, reds, the spectrum for bad, greens the spectrum for good. There's not a whole lot of really good ones right now, but there are a few down here. And that's just how much each province makes per month, I believe. But it, it's, it just shows an average economic wealth, basically. Uh, we've already seen de jure duchies. It's a little bit easier to see this far zoomed out, and as you can tell, there's a lot of different ones. And to form them, you basically have to control more than half of however many there are. In some places, those duchies can be as small as two, and others, those duchies can be huge. There's... <clears throat> like looking at, um, I believe Lancaster has four. And I'm sure there's a few more that have more than that. Does your kingdom show what kingdoms, or what the does your territory is of the kingdoms? And once again, just like duchies, you need to actually have control over more than half of the area within that kingdom to form that kingdom. If the kingdom's already formed, you have to usurp it. Uh, does your empires? Now, taking a look at does your empires, you can see that. Once again, it's, it's almost the exact same way. You're basically forming an empire over a certain amount of land. And I believe only one of those, or two of those are only in existence right now. And those empires are the Holy Roman Empire and the Byzantine Empire. All the other ones have to be formed. We dump into revolt risk. As you can see, there's few people in revolt. It's the same spectrum. Red's bad, green's good. Uh, one thing that I've learned just recently, and I'm not kind of ashamed to admit that I've just learned this, is that you, when in specific map mode, you can hover over something and it'll show you what the revolt risk is for that area, and it'll give you the reasons why you have that revolt risk there. Like in Dublin, there's a revolt risk of one percent, but that's because there's a one percent revolt risk bonus from having a different culture group of the leader. And then dynasties, and this is what we're going to be concerned with when it gets closer to the end of the game, is the dynasty of the controlling group. So currently, um, as you can tell, like Scotland is controlled by the Dunkeld dynasty, so the king is of the Dunkeld dynasty. We can go in, you can tell that my dynasty is the Matherfall, though it's really hard to see right here. And what we're hoping is to see this color, or... Not even specifically this color, but to see this name everywhere. <laughs> Alright, we move on to opinions. And opinions are... I believe every personal county... This is about personal counties and how they feel about you. As you can tell, some are green while some are darker colored most likely the ones down here because they're of a different religion yeah they don't like me that much direct vassals this is how once you're uh, like even within the kingdom of England which right now is under the king of England you can tell that there are different vassals because there's the Northumberland vassal the Mercia vassal all these vassals are under the king so this is how you can start telling who controls what when your empire or your kingdom starts getting larger? Um, Republic trade zones. I've just recently picked up the Republic. I haven't messed with them that much. But this will show you who controls what trade zones. And these are all the sea zones. 
So as you can see, Genoa controls all of these, while Pisa controls these, and I believe this is Venice right here. There should also be Gotland up here. Yeah, that's it. And then family trade zones. This would only be important if we were playing a republic. And currently I don't see any. But alright, we've gone through all the map modes. I've also given you a basic idea of what I'm going to be doing. And with that, I believe I'm going to let you go. And we'll move on to the next episode here shortly. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.